trans minors, as in kids, trans minors protected from parents under Washington law. Protected from their own parents. How about state government kidnaps children from parents? That would be more accurate, yes. And and number one, isn't it it, statutory rape laws would indicate that child sex is still illegal. Now, for now, how could you exactly? They're trying to change that. I know. Oh, yeah, I know. We've we've documented documented that here. I I just I don't get this. I, I don't get this. And as you and I have both said. When you are an adult and you want to do something life changing that is going to remove body parts and you want to do that and that's how you choose to live, that is your decision. But when we are talking about children who do not have the legal right to drive, to own a weapon, for good reason, to vote, to drink alcohol for very good reason, how are these children allowed to make that type of life altering decision? And, And why do we have medical organizations and non-governmental organizations who seem to be their mission to take that decision and encourage that decision by a minor child and take it out of the hands of the parents. Because this is leading to, um, if your kids are woke and don't want to go to church, we'll go ahead and take them out of your custody. This is absolute Chinese style stuff. Listen to what's in this, but by the, and the reason the AP wrote this, by the way, is this bill is just passed. Okay. It was signed. This is a kidnap bill in Washington state at the age of 12. If your child goes to their teacher or guidance counselor and says, I want to transition and my parents are hostile or I am gay and my parents won't let me fill in the blank here, whatever you want to do, whoever you want to date. Um, the guidance counselor can call DSS and have the child picked up at age 12, and they do not have to tell the parents where the child went. It is a kidnapping. It's a state-sponsored kidnapping. Anybody else that did that, that would be considered kidnapping. Yes. Oh, and if your daughter uh, at 12 or 13 would like to have an abortion, they can do that as well. So um, what? And then, so where does your kid go? Um, Well, they have now, their Department of Social Services for the state uh, has created a program where People who are trans friendly can apply to foster your child and your child can then go live with them starting at age 12. And it will be up to the, they also have foster homes as well that will be specifically geared toward LGBT kids and trans kids to get them out of their parents' homes so that they can live however they want starting at age 12 without their parents interfering. Um, And it will be left up to the discretion of the home, whether the parents are notified as to the location of the child. Otherwise, it's protected. So if you have a belief in a particular religion that promotes traditional family values, that's a problem. You can be excluded from these foster Mm -hmm. family situations. Yeah, absolutely. No, that already happened. However, if you have a belief in the the current LBGTQ plus narrative, if you have that belief, then you are given special privileges and put to the front of the line. Oh, it's worse than that. They are advertising for homes, specific foster homes specifically for uh, trans kids. And we just had the Fox news story a week ago. There was a mom who wanted to adopt in Washington state. um, And they came to her house for a home check. And they said, because she did not take her kids to pride parades and did not have like pride flags or anything celebrating pride uh, plus, you know, transgender rights for children in her house that she was not appropriate because she was a Christian. She was not appropriate. And what she said was, listen, I'm a tolerant person. So if I had a foster kid come through here who was gay or whatever, uh, she said, you know, that I would not discriminate against them or anything, but I'm not going to actively take my current children to pride, you know, parades. Bam. She didn't qualify. See, that's, so this is where we're going. They, they're going to take your kids and put them in woke homes. That is the type of forced for speech wrong thing. that you and I spoke about yep. years ago. Years ago. And told you this is exactly where this is going. That it is yep. not enough to be tolerant and to accept and to be inclusive, but you must say that you support this. You must encourage it and you must not denounce it and you must denounce your previous beliefs and, and promote these. Yeah. And let me tell you where this is going next. Okay. Cause this is the, I'm going to do the next story hasn't happened. I just don't know how long it'll take if there's going to be a kid who's like, um, my parents are making me go to church and my church teaches the current Bible, um, which is forbids premarital sex of a heterosexual or a homosexual nature and forbids homosexual sex that's in the Bible. Right. Yeah. And 
Um, I don't want to live with my parents anymore. I'm 13. Can you pick me up? That's coming. This law will be used that way or they will attend it to use it that way, even if the child is not transgender or homosexual. That's coming. And what you're going to have here is homosexual kids saying, hey, I identify as gay um, and I don't want to go to church with my parents anymore. And, and then let me tell you what comes after that. What comes after that is I identify as a worshiper of Gaia or Satan or uh, agnostic or atheist, and I don't want to go to church with my parents. It's not it has nothing to do with gender ideology at that point. I just, I don't identify as a Catholic and my parents make me go and they will pick your child up at age 12 and they will take them and put them in, a, in an atheist home. I'm telling you, that is what this is about. That is what they are working up to. They're coming at it a different way in California this week where we've learned they're going to have a hate, um, a, a hate department where you can call and report someone for being non-woke and hurting your feelings. And they will, the state of California will investigate uh, thought crime. Uh, and they're seeing that they will not turn the names over to the police unless the reporter requests it. Well, that sort of gets to a problem. Lee. It's yeah. not illegal to say things that make people mad. Yeah. But they're still saying if it's requested, they'll turn it over to police. Well, guess what? How, let me let me explain why they're doing this. All of this by public records law must be public record, right? So the first thing that's going to happen is the media is going to say, give us a list of the haters. They'll turn it out. And guess what? Now you can't. Now you're not employed. Well, what problem here is, um, again, and this is the same as in Minnesota is the law they just had there um, that they're debating. They haven't passed it yet. Guess what happens? I live in South Carolina. I post something that makes some lunatic in California mad. I get turned over to the hate police. Now I might live in South Carolina, but I'm on their list. Guess what? That's a permanent record. Can I get a job somewhere else? No, I've committed a hate thought crime. This is where they're going. So now let's go forward. Okay, I want to adopt. Oh, but you've been turned into for hate thought crime. Sorry, can't do it. I want to foster kids. Mm, sorry, you've been turned in for hate thought crime. You're not woke. You can't foster kids. Do you see where this is going? I want to adopt a child. I'm Christian. Oh, you really can't. You cannot. They're going to turn everybody in. And that's where this is bad. Anybody who's a citizen of Minnesota or California will be able to make the report on anybody in the country. And this is how these databases are going to start. 